Hi guys, welcome back. Hopefully after yesterday's day of practice with nothing new, hopefully you're feeling a little bit better about your related rates problems because today I have to add just one more type and it's maybe a little bit tricky, but just be calm, be calm. It'll be all right. Okay, so take a minute to read this problem, draw a picture of it, and remember on your picture, don't put any numbers on the picture if those things are changing as time goes on. Only put numbers on your picture if they are constant. Okay, so we have a flag and it's being lowered, so this distance is changing. We'll call that Y. I always do up and down as Ys. We have a person, do, 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 person, and they're looking up at the flag. So they're looking up here from their eyeballs. Remember, whenever you have an angle of elevation, it's always from the imaginary line of the sight up. Okay, so it's fa the fact that this starts from the eyeballs is important. Okay, let's see. The observer stands 20 feet from the base of the flagpole and watches the flag being lowered. So my question is, is the observer walking? Nope. So that 20 is a constant, okay? Watching the flag being lowered at a rate of five feet per second. So in variable speak, what is five feet per second? What are they giving us there? It's how fast the flag is being lowered. So that's dy dt, okay? But is this distance that we're calling y, is that distance getting bigger or smaller? Smaller, so that's actually a negative five feet per second. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? Determine the rate at which the angle of elevation is changing. So we have a new variable. We have a variable that's an angle. So I'll use theta for that. There's an angle right there, and they want to know how fast that angle is changing. So the question this time is d theta dt. What, how fast is that angle changing? Okay, I'm going to clean this up a little bit just to make it a little easier for me to write. Okay, so the question is how fast is the angle changing? I would expect it to get smaller, so I expect a negative answer. But we need a relationship that we can get from somewhere that relates all of the things we have in this picture. So we have an angle and two sides of a right triangle, and that angle is your clue. This one involves trig. So which trig function would we use if we have, according to the angle, we have the side across from the angle, which is opposite, and the side adjacent to the angle? Hopefully you're thinking that is tangent. So tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? So that's the first thing that's different. We have trig put in there, your Sokotoa trig. Hopefully you remember sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, now we're gonna do the derivative of both sides. You have a couple of choices. You could multiply by this 20 and put it on the left side so that you don't have a fraction, okay? Or recognize that on the right side, that does not require a quotient rule because one of those is a constant. This is just the same as 1 20th y, okay? So the derivative of that is gonna be one over 20 dy dt. Just remember that 20 can be re rewritten as a number out in front. If that messes you up, then put it over here on the left side, multiplying by 20 instead. It'll be the same either way. Okay, so take the derivative of both sides. Do you remember what the derivative of tangent is? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the derivative of tangent theta, when we're doing the derivative with respect to time, is secant squared theta d theta dt. And on the right side, the derivative of 1 20th y is 1 over 20 dy dt. Remember, we're doing the derivative with respect to time, so the only variable you can differentiate is a t, and there are never any stinking t's. All right, now we've got to fill in all this stuff. d 
D theta dt is the question, so I know I'm not gonna know that. I have a secant squared theta right here. Dy dt is negative five. All right, well, if d, if d theta dt is the question, then I must be able to fill in this secant squared. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that's not so bad, I promise you. Okay, what you're gonna do is find this is secant theta squared. Well, secant, remember, is the reciprocal of cosine. So just find cosine and flip it. All right, so we go back to our triangle now and fill in this moment in time, now that we have time put into the problem. So now go back to the triangle and read what's going on at this moment. Okay, at this moment, the flag is 15 feet above eye level. So that means the Y is 15 right now. And focusing on the angle, I want secant theta. You don't have to find theta, you won't need a calculator. You just need to find the ratio of the sides, secant theta. Okay, well that's the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have to find the hypotenuse. You can find the hypotenuse doing the Pythagorean theorem. This is also a Pythagorean triple, three, four, five, all of them times three, Sorry, or all of them times five. So if we did the Pythagorean theorem, or if you know your Pythagorean triples, you're gonna get that this is 25. Okay, so for this part of the problem, all I'm trying to do is figure out what's going here. All right, so I have secant theta. So I'm thinking cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, but I'm flipping it, hypotenuse over adjacent. So it's gonna be 25 over 20. Okay, because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. I'm going to simplify that fraction and then still square it. Simplify, divide them both by 5. Then square it, and you get 25 sixteenths. That means that when we have this secant squared theta right here, that is equivalent to this. So I can replace it with 25 sixteenths. From here, getting d theta dt by itself is going to be easy. So let's go back through this to make sure you understand where all of that came from, okay? So from the top, I think you understood probably why we use tangent, because we had opposite and adjacent. After we get the derivative involved, you put your numbers back on the triangle and find the missing sides. You'll need the Pythagorean theorem. Then, if it's secant, think cosine adjacent over hypotenuse but flip it and we really need secant squared so off to the side you find your secant simplify and square it all right now getting d theta dt by itself is pretty easy on the right side this is negative one fourth and i'm going to multiply by 16 and divide by 25 cancel and you get negative 4 over 25 and what would the units be if this is how fast the angle is changing then it's radians in calculus it's always radians never degrees so we're going to say that angle is decreasing 4 25ths radians per second radians per second would be the units all right, so that's as bad as it gets, guys. That's the last type of problem we're going to do. In your worksheet today, you might want to skip to the ones that are like this so you can practice the trig problems that are new, okay? Because all the other problems are going to be redundant, the same ones that you've been doing for a couple of days. These are ones that are tricky. Good luck with your worksheet. Let me know if you need me to work out more problems. Bye, guys.